You're very welcome to the Science Gallery for the launch of our new show, The Hyperbolic Crochet Coral Reef. This is our, I don't know, seventh or eighth show, I can't remember. But we've always had a vision of a show, and this, is, this show particularly is the realisation of our dream of what, what the display should be. Every time one is done in a city, what we find is that the contributors there bring something unique that we had never seen before. Well, the Irish Reef is the latest in what we've had as a series of reefs made in communities all over the world. And in the lead up to the Science Gallery show, we've been working with a community in, in Dublin and all across Ireland to crochet their own corals. And they've just done the most amazing job. We're four of the people who were involved in the making of the Irish Reef. I thought it was really interesting the community aspect of the whole project, um, the fact that there are people all around Ireland now and also all around the world who got invo have got involved in, in this craft work. You don't need to do a lot or be really creative or really artistic in order to make a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. And it's been a fantastic co communal project that is so important in terms of um, the message that it, we need to get out there to everybody in the world, that we are in charge of ensuring that we don't ruin our coral reefs. The bleached reef is actually a response to the environmental crisis that is facing reefs all over the world that coral reefs are being devastated by global warming. And what happens with reefs when they get stressed through any kind of um, environmental stress is that the reefs go bleached. And if we don't stop warming up our atmosphere, it's entirely possible scientists now believe there will be no coral reefs left by the end of this century. The bleached reef is not only in some ways the most elegant response to the devastation of reefs. It's also, one of the, in my mind, one of the most beautiful. What is remarkable about these pieces of Nadia's is that underneath each of these pieces is a piece of plastic trash. So what Nadia has done is taken little bits of plastic debris and encrusted them with jewel-like beadwork. So she's effectively taken, basically, taken a piece of grit and like a pearl built this remarkably beautiful structure around it. The part of the reef that we're seeing here is called the toxic reef and it's all made out of plastic and particularly plastic trash. Every year human beings produce about 100 million tonnes of plastic and about 10% um, of that, about 10 million tonnes of plastic a year, ends up in the oceans. And these blue forms are particularly remarkable because what they're all crocheted from is the blue plastic wrappers that the New York Times comes in. The origin of the Crochet Reef Project is actually in mathematics. And that's because all of the crenellated and frilly structures that you see in coral reefs. The reason that they have that kind of look is because they're all embodiments of what's called hyperbolic geometry. It turns out that the only way that mathematicians know how to make models of this geometry is with crochet. And that was a discovery that was made by a mathematician at Cornell, Dr. Dana Temina. And my sister and I found out about Dana's work a few years later. And we started crocheting these structures just as purely mathematical things. And then one day Christine said, I'm sick of doing pure mathematical hyperbolics, I'm going to branch out. And she started doing deviations from the mathematical perfection, so she kind of introduced mutations into, into the crochet pattern. And as soon as Chrissy started to do that, not only did they look organic, but we realised they looked like coral reefs. And that's not a coincidence, because this is what coral reefs are doing. This piece here is actually one of the first things that my sister Christine started. And she did it as an experiment. She wanted to see what would happen when you just kept doing hyperbolic, when you kept doing the hyperbolic crochet technique. How would it grow? So in a sense, she was trying to explore, like a coral, what happens if a coral grows for a long time? And what happens is that not only does it develop the beautiful frills and crenellations that we all know typically of corals, but it also starts to curl around the edges in really beautiful ways. Mm -hmm. 